Hey guys, good afternoon. I wanted to hop on because I am hoping that by hopping on live, I can increase your faith today. Sometimes we just need a reminder. Sometimes we need some scripture given to us to hear the word of God and let our faith arise. You guys, I keep seeing all over on Facebook that people are in fear. They're in panic mode. Uh, toilet paper, like on my way to the conference this weekend, I kept seeing people were going out and buying toilet paper and the shelves were loose. And at that moment, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is like such mental warfare. Because what it does is it triggers us back into the 2020 response. And it puts so much fear and anxiety and panic in people. And when we go into a spirit of fear, y'all, we don't think straight. We can't hear God's voice as well. And so I'm not going to be on here long. I'm only going to be on here for maybe eight minutes because I do have a Zoom coming on, which I know you guys prefer it being pretty fast and quick. And so here we go. I heard, I keep hearing, let faith arise, you guys. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. Y'all want to know why things are so weird, why so much stuff is happening? It's because Jesus is coming soon. He is coming for his bride soon, you guys. And instead of being in fear, we need to be in faith and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard not to be distracted, not to be overwhelmed. But if we just continue to stay in his presence and continue to focus in on him, you guys, it's just... It's amazing what that will do for us. So the enemy is loosening fear, confusion, and witchcraft on the land right now, on the world. And you can feel it. You can feel the fear and the confusion and the witchcraft. Um, faith is the opposite of fear. And faith, where do we get our faith, guys? How do we increase faith? The Word of God. The Word of God. Faith comes by the Word of God. Romans ten seventeen. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Let me remind you today that God did not give us a spirit of fear. When we feel fear, when we feel anxious, when we feel scared, it's not God giving us that feeling. That is of the enemy. Because in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You guys, we should have as Christians a sound mind. And if you don't have a sound mind, we need to pray, we need to rebuke, we need to cast out all spirits of fear in the name of Jesus also, pray, prayer and praise is our weapon. You guys, if you're in prayer, if you're praying without ceasing, if you are praising and singing and hymns and songs to the Lord Jesus Christ and thanking him for everything, it is really hard for fear and anxiety to take over you. Philippians 4, 4 through 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus prayer and praise you guys i want to remind you that faith is not seen it is substance hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen you can't see the things that you're praying for or hoping for faith is just walking by faith and trusting in God that he is going to do what he said he's going to do that he is not a liar he is a, a god of keeping his promises. He never fails. Faith, we walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. It, I know it's hard. I know it's hard walking by faith and, and just believing and trusting and not being able to see the things that you are praying for, that you're hoping for. I know it's hard, but you guys, God will give us the strength to have faith if we continue to pray and believe and trust him because he is working all things together for the good for those who love him these are the promises you guys that's why it's so important to be in the word of god faith the size of a mustard seed moves mountains this is all the things he was speaking to me today and i went and found all the scripture for it faith the size of a mustard seed moves mountains in the hand of god Matthew 17, 20, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. And that's what Jesus was saying. Faith without works is dead. James 2, 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. There's so much scripture, so much to feast on. I wanted to remind you too that Jesus told us in these days hearts would fail because of fear. 
In Luke 21, 26, it says, Men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. I want to go in and I want to read this in Luke 21 and starting at verse 25, because this right here, you guys, in this moment of time, this is what we are seeing. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of the man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, listen, listen, listen to this. When these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redem redemption draws near. And he spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees when they now short through shoot forth you see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand so likewise you when you see these things come to pass know you that the kingdom of god is near at hand verily i say to you this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So what did he say when all these things start coming? What did Jesus say? He said, when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. You guys, Jesus is coming soon. He is coming soon and he told us what to look for. And that is why you feel what you're feeling, what you're seeing in the world right now. That is why everything seems to be going crazy because the King, the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua is coming soon and praise be to God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. And that right there will increase your faith, knowing that he's coming soon for his bride. You guys, we don't have anything to fear. What, what is there to fear when Jesus conquered the grave? He literally gave his life a sinless man, never sinned, never did any wrong, but they, they crucified him. They beat him and he, he gave up his life. He could have caught on an angel. He could have came up off that cross. He could have, he didn't have to endure any of that, but he did for you and for me so that we would have forgiveness of sin so that we could come boldly to his throne. The veil was torn. We have access, you guys, and there's nothing to fear because Jesus already has the victory. We have the victory because Jesus had the victory and gave us all authority. We tread on serpents and snakes. My little girl earlier, Chloe, she said, Mommy, you know how they say how it says Jesus get behind me? Well, why do we say that? Because then if he's behind us, then he's coming. He's going to be able to follow us. And I'm like, you know, you got a point. What we should say, you know, honestly, I feel like I'm going to start saying this. You know, Jesus, get under my feet. Get, or not Jesus, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Satan, get under my feet in Jesus' mighty name. Devil, get under my feet. We trample on snakes and scorpions in the name of Jesus. And so I wanted to go over that too because literally we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. We are going to be with our King Jesus forever, eternity, no matter if we... If he comes back tomorrow or if we lose our life tomorrow, like we have eternity with Jesus and we like right now our life is a vapor. It is such a, a just a glimpse of a vapor. We have all eternity to look forward and we should not fear man. We shall fear the Lord. Only fear God and reverence for him. The fear of the Lord brings wisdom and the angels encamp for those who fear the Lord. So we... Without faith, we cannot please him. Hebrews 11, 6 states that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Faith is not double-minded. 
Double-minded means wavering, undecided, marked by hypocrisy or insecurity. James 1, 7, but let him ask in faith without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. I feel like the Lord's really speaking to me about this too, and he wanted me to talk to you about it. Um, about are you the same person at church with your friends with unbelievers with like in different settings behind closed doors are you the same person all the time because it doesn't matter what kind of faces we put on jesus sees it all god sees everything he knows who you are behind closed doors he knows what you're doing behind closed door and darkness all darkness is going to come to the light everyone's getting exposed right now it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, like the light will expose the darkness. And that's why a lot of people hated Jesus because the light exposed their darkness and evil deeds and they didn't want to repent. And so I feel like him putting that on me and wanting me to speak that to others is just another reminder of like, y'all, we've got to have our house in order because Jesus is coming back soon and he's coming back for a clean bride without spot or blemish. And we can't hide these things from him. We are all going to stand before judgment and stand face to face to him. And he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant or depart from me. I never knew you. It's not time anymore to be playing church. We're not playing games anymore. You're either all in or all out. Out, and I kept feeling like the Lord was saying a divided heart. I'm about to go on to do not fear, do not let your hearts be troubled. And let not your heart be divided anymore. Who are you going to serve? You can't love the world and you can't love Jesus at the same time. You can't do it. Your heart is going to be in a tug of war. You've got to give up the things that are ensnaring you, that are weighing you down. All the sin that you're thinking of right now that you already feel guilty about, you already feel convicted about. It's time to give it up and give it to God and repent and turn away. How do we have for increased faith? Repent and pray for it and ask for the Lord to increase your faith confess God's word. You got to know the word of God. And when you're in the word of God, it's going to start changing you. You're going to start having different desires. You're going to start having increased faith. When you read what is in this supernatural living word, your faith is naturally going to be increased. That's why I came on here today and gave you all of this word, the word of God, because it's going to penetrate. It's going to do something in you supernaturally that is going to increase your faith. It's going to convict you. It, the, the Bible is a, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's going to come in and it's going to do supernatural spiritual surgery in your body and in your heart and in your mind. Praise God. So repent, pray for help and increase faith. Confess God's Increased faith, confess God's word, get into fellowship with other believers and a good church, you guys. We were the people <laughs> that are like, I am the temple. I, you know, like when we get in our stubborn little streaks, it's like, we don't need, like, uh, -uh you know, we will be the church. But you guys, when we did that, we were attacked so much. The enemy just like, we were lone wolf rangers and he was just shooting them arrows at us. And man, I'm so thankful that we are in a good church that lets the Holy Spirit flow, that does not quench the spirit. We are tongue talking, Bible believing, Bible preaching. We bold our pastor and everyone in it is bold and they stand on the word of God and they just let the Holy Spirit lead prophetic words, healings. There's been so many healings in our church. And I'm telling you what, I don't think that me and Chris, I mean, the Lord would definitely strengthen us enough to do what we do. But if we didn't have people supporting and encouraging and praying for us and covering us, like it would be almost impossible in the days we're living in because most people that you're around are not speaking faith into you. They're not increasing your faith. They're honestly making it, because we live in the world, they're speaking doubt and negativity and just every, like the whole world is anti-Christ right now. So it's super hard. You've got to be in fellowship with other believers um, in a good church. And then learn your authority. 
in Jesus and rebuke the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. When you start having fear overtake your heart, you say, I rebuke the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of fear in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, loosen faith. Increase my faith. Let faith arise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And worship and praise, y'all. And there you go. I'm going to hop off here. I hope this helps someone. I know there's a lot of fear. The spirit of fear is being unleashed right now. And it is great. Like, it is wild. Everyone's scared about the election. Everyone's scared about war. Rumors of wars. Everyone's scared about the storms coming. And we pray against that storm in Jesus' name. Lord, protect your people. Protect your remnant. Let the lost come to salvation. This is... Like, the only reason we're still here, y'all, and Jesus hasn't came back yet, is because he loves the souls. He wants more souls to come to him. He doesn't want any to perish, none to perish in the name of Jesus. That is why. And so that should be, as the church, our mission. Our mission should be souls. To know him. To bring them back in a right relationship with him. We are supposed to be persuading people to come to Jesus because we can't save, we can't heal, we can't deliver, but we know the one who does. Jesus. All glory to Jesus. So I love you guys. Have a good day. See you later.